Jeff Ferrell's on the Hot Topics. Yeah, stay tuned. I got something cool to talk about. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. My name is Jeff Ferrell's on the Hot Topics. And boy, in the political world, life is amazing, right? Mail-in ballots. What do you guys think of mail-in ballots? Go ahead and put down your, your thoughts down about mail-in ballots. Mail-in ballots, it's confusing in the way that's presented to people. Because mail-in ballots actually don't exist. Absentee ba ballots do. And what the Democrats want is universal mail-in ballots. Let me explain the difference. To get an absentee ballot, you actually have to ask for it. When you get one, if you go down to the polling place yourself, you can't vote. You're not on the list. You're at the wrong polling place. Or you're at the right one, but you're not there. I've tried it. And the reason for that is because they know you got a mail-in ballot. They don't want you to vote it twice. So there's record of you receiving a mail-in ballot. Now, on your absentee ballot, here I am calling a mail-in ballot, it's so easy to confuse them. On your absentee ballots, like at least in the state of Arizona, and I'm pretty sure every place is like this because the military, are, they have absentee ballots for the military. So every state has an absentee ballot. So everyone can apply for it. It's up to you. You have freedom of choice to do it or not. So on the absentee ballot, if you don't receive it by a specific date, it does not count. In the state of Arizona, each county has a priority list. They're pretty much the same. Receiving the absentee ballots by a specific date, they're counted first. In person is counted second. Depending on the margin of difference between first place and second place, or the percent, I forget if it was percent or, 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 or number, I think it's percent. Then they will go and they will count ballot, the absentee ballots that were received by the polling date. But they won't count all of them. They will only count, I don't remember the exact number, but it's like for an example 100,000 ballots. So they only count 100,000 ballots. And then they'll see where they stand. And then if they need to, then they continue. If you notice, if you go back and you look at the, uh, the, the, the history of voting, you know, you just take any kind of district and you'll look it up. You'll actually see that the, they will, when you're watching that live, they'll actually call the race. They'll say, okay, so-and-so won with 82% of precincts reporting. Really? Those other 18% may actually be all in the other person's favor, but they'll call the race. In some cases, they'll actually stop counting. That's why mail-in ballots don't always count, because what they're looking at is they're looking at the trend. They're like, well, these people want this, and therefore, well, these other people will probably want the same thing. So they're assuming. Now, the universal ballots, the universal ballots you don't have to apply for that. They just give it to you. Now what's great about that is that means you can go down to the polling place and you can vote in person. And you can vote with your mail-in ballot. How cool is that? You get to vote twice at least. Now, because they're universal mail-in ballots, nothing's verified. So they're just mass shooting ballots out to people. Someone could have died literally two weeks ago. Someone could have died, you know, six months ago. And and because the people who are handling their, their estate didn't properly handle it, they still got a ballot. So you can vote for that person too. Is it legal? I don't know. It's universal mail-in ballots. When you go to submit your ballot, you're doing a little signature on the uh, on the thing, but the ballot itself doesn't have your name. 
And your signatures change over time, so are they really checking your signature on every single one? I kind of doubt it. There's no way that massive, they are literally opening a ballot, throwing it here, putting the envelope there. I've been part of the process, I know. So, so they'll do that and they don't know. They're not going to sit there, oh, well this is John Smith. Let me go pick up John Smith. Okay, there's John Smith there. His signature, his signature. They're not going to take the time to do that. They don't have the time. They don't have the resources to do that. So let me tell you. It's important to understand the difference between universal mail-in ballots and absentee ballots. Absentee ballots is more secure. You can... You can... You, you still can get away with voting multiple times, but the universal, you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to vote multiple times. Now, I don't care who that benefits, just the pure fact that that could happen says you don't do universal mail-in ballots. It doesn't matter if there's a proof of, of ballot fraud or whatever because first off universal mail-in hasn't been done before until just recently so bottom line is what are your thoughts universal mail-in ballots to me just says you're allowed to vote multiple times that doesn't seem right absentee ballots you're actually you're actually asking for it and that to me I think is a better way mail-in ballots that doesn't exist because that is absentee and universal so you have to be more specific it's like saying immigrant no they're either legal immigrant or legal or documented or undocumented they're just not immigrant unless you want to group them both together so if you're calling mail-in ballots and you're grouping absenteeism with universal um, the two totally different deals one of them allows you to vote twice and the other one doesn't Hello. One of them is opens the door for fraud. If you vote twice, that just doesn't seem fair elections, does it? So, Democrats, you're messed up. This is Jeff. A rule of the hot topics. Have a great day. See you by a fun.